Runway Gen 4 has just changed the AI filmmaking game. Imagine taking your AI camera and precisely controlling its movements to perfectly tell your stories. Well, that's possible now. Runway Gen 4 offers you more control over your AI video scenes than ever before. And today, I'll show you exactly how to direct incredible photorealistic scenes, revealing all the secrets to writing the best text prompts, and how to control every possible camera motion you can think of to turn those boring AI videos into cinematic masterpieces. All the tech is here now, all you're missing is knowledge. And in this guide, you'll find everything you need to know to direct your AI films from scratch. Let's actually begin with a shot that has no camera movement inside at all. The static shot is taken from a locked camera so that there's no movement. These are perfect for scenes that are calm and quiet, like these nature documentary type scenes with some alien life forms. But static shots are also a powerful tool to build tension in a scene. This might seem counterintuitive, but the stillness of the camera combined with these creepy crawling creatures creates an uncomfortable feeling for the viewer. Use the prompt locked camera to generate videos with static shots and runway. You should start your prompts with a camera motion and then follow that with what the subject does in the scene. Finally, adding some environmental effects if you want. Locked camera, the white creature crawls onto the astronaut suit. In the new Runway Gen 4 model, your prompt should focus solely on the actions that are happening inside the scene. Be direct as possible. Specifically tell Runway what the subject is doing. You'll notice that the order of the words you use in the prompt matters. Here I prompt, the subject blinks and turns its head. And in the video, the alien will blink first and then turn his head. The word and connects different motions in the order you write them in. He gestures with his hands and then nods his head. By the way, I'm using image to video for all the shots that I'm showing in this guy. Inside Runway, I uploaded the reference images that I want to animate. Make sure you've got the newest Gen 4 model selected. And underneath, I'll adding a text prompt describing what I want to happen inside of the scene. And then just click on generate. Static shots are also great for highlighting human emotion inside a scene. One thing to know about Runway is that it's not the best at creating dynamic human emotions. I used image to video, starting with this reference photo of an astronaut, and gave him different facial expressions like being sad or him getting angry. These aren't that expressive though, his face doesn't change much at all. It looks kind of plastic, so what I recommend for creating human emotions is to start with a reference image that already has dramatic emotions on it and then animating them with video for the best effects. For the rest of the movements and prompts I'll show in this guide, they can be applied to all different scales, whether that's at the microscopic level with these microbes floating around, or if we zoom out to observe small insects crawling on the ground. An important tip about AI video is that it's much better at animating stuff in slow motion. This prevents deformations and warping that you'll get from faster movements. I recommend generating videos that move slowly first, then upload your clips into a video editor and speed them up inside there if you want them to look faster. Let's zoom out from the bugs a bit more, a little more, and one more time. To bring more life into your videos, add in little details like the winds blowing or big dramatic motions like these buildings collapsing in the background. If you want more deep dive guides on AI video production, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll be making more comprehensive tutorials like this to take your AI videos to the next level. The next camera movement is a dollying shot where we zoom in closer to the subject of the scene. It's perfect for building anticipation. Here's a man in an interrogation scene with dramatic shadows over his face. We dolly in and slowly approach him, building tension as we get closer. You can control the speed of camera movements with simple words like fast or quickly. On the right, the prompt instructs the camera to quickly zoom in and we approach him much faster and also get closer. 
Also, think about exactly what you want the camera to zoom in on. You can control for stuff like that. In this scene, I changed the prompt to specifically zooming on the cross the bishop is holding as a centerpiece of the scene. We can also dolly out or move the camera backwards with the prompt's camera pullback. This doesn't work as consistently as zoom in, so it might take a couple tries to get it right. Sometimes, it's easier to add in camera motions yourself inside a video editor. We can use keyframes to easily create zoom motions. So here's a video clip of a static camera shot on a soldier, and the world around him is burning down. Let's say I actually want to make the camera pull backwards, which doesn't always work well when you're prompting for it. So instead, inside my video editor, I'll start at the beginning of the clip and add a keyframe. Then I'll increase the scale of the clip to over 100%, so that we start with the video clip from an already zoomed in perspective. Then, I'll move to the end of this video clip and add a second keyframe. This time, I can change the scale back down to the original 100%. What keyframes can do is transition between the two different zoom scales. So, it gives the illusion that we're slowly zooming out. The next movement is a horizontal pan, where the camera rotates on a horizontal axis in the left to right directions, like you're turning your head to look around. Use a prompt like, the camera glides right to create this rotational effect. Or just instruct the camera to pan and follow your subjects as they move around the world. In this case, riding on horseback. Slowly panning quietly builds anticipation in the scene. But a quick and sudden shift from one character to another creates energy and chaos. This movement is called the whip pan, where the camera suddenly whips between different shots. You can't make this effect using your AI video prompts. But we can go inside a video editor and stack the two video clips next to each other. I use CapCut, which comes with tons of pre-built video effects, and the whip pan is one of them. Just drag that transition between the two video clips, and we've created the dynamic whip pan motion. We can also rotate the camera vertically by using the tilt motion. What I found is prompting for these types of motions work best when you tell the AI what you want the camera to be looking towards like burning smoke in the sky, or tilt upwards to reveal the ceiling of a church. Something that works incredibly well is using the natural subject motion to guide the camera movement. So if I start with an image reference of this emperor sitting in his chair, and I prompt for him to stand up, the camera naturally follows his movement and tilts upwards. You don't always need a camera motion prompt. Just by allowing the natural movement in the scene to occur, forces a camera to move along with it. Sometimes you need to slow things down to get the best results. In this scene, the protesters are marching forwards, but the motion is really jittery. They bounce up and down quickly, the sparks are flying everywhere, it's not realistic looking at all. Tell your subjects to move more slowly, and the results will be much better. AI is bad at generating fast, quick movements, and really good at slow, cinematic ones. You can also introduce additional elements into the scene through camera movements. Here I asked for the camera to pan from the emperor in the throne to the woman next to him. But you do notice that the visual style changes. She's not as detailed and the colors are brighter. So usually I don't recommend trying to add completely new subjects into the shot using runway. Since the visual style isn't preserved anyways. Also AI does censor some subjects. Here's an image of a defeated rebel, and Runway refuses to animate stuff like this unfortunately. So far, we've talked a lot about camera movements, but the camera angle that you see this scene from is just as important. It works best to directly prompt for camera angles in the reference images before animating them into AI videos. Low angle shots tilt upwards and look at the subjects above. It makes them look big, powerful, even intimidating. High angle shots move the camera above the subject and tilt downwards, making them look more vulnerable and often evokes the feeling of loneliness. Bird's eye view flies a camera overhead, showing the wide expanse of the entire environment. We can highlight different parts of the subject using the close-up shot to focus on just one area. 
or pull the camera back into a wide angle shot that shows a silhouette of a man against the massive backdrop of the neon city at nighttime. Now let's see the magic we create when we add AI camera movements on top of the camera angles in our images. Starting with low angle shots, we show the power and strength of our subjects. There's no question that they're the authority figure in the scene. If we use high angle shots, we can exaggerate the effect, prompting for the camera to fly above and tilt downwards. This is also known as a crane shot. Here it shows the expansive city below the boy. Crane shots give us an overhead objective perspective of what's happening. Although it doesn't work for every scene, sometimes the AI just slightly pans the camera upwards. I find that this works best if the camera is already slightly pointing downwards in the reference image. When you write prompts, describe exactly how you want the scene to end. In this example, I just told the camera to fly down to the ground level, and it ends up facing the car tire. But let's say I changed the prompt to say, fly down to a ground level shot in front of the vehicle. The camera swoops downwards and finishes the shot exactly in front of the car lights. Try Dutch angle shots, which are angled scenes that give a disorienting feeling for the viewer. It's a little unsettling, like you're losing your grip on reality. One of my favorite motions is the arc shot. The camera moves in a circle around the subject while keeping the focus on them. Try using this prompt. Camera rotates to the right while maintaining focus on the subject, which will create the effect where the camera can orbit around this woman. Use FPV shot to fly through the environment like you're a drone camera, and swap between normal and hyperspeed if you want a change of pace. The scale of the scene matters. The larger the environment shown inside the video, the bigger and more dramatic the motions will look. I do recommend upscaling your images to 2K resolution before turning them into AI videos. I use the Magnific Upscaler for this purpose. The higher quality of the input images you use, the better the AI videos will end up looking. One thing is clear, the initial camera angle and viewpoint you use to animate the videos has a huge effect on the resulting shot whether it's an intense focused close-up shot or a wide expansive view. So far, we've covered a lot of cinematic camera motions. But we can get a more natural movement by prompting for a handheld camera, which gives a bit more of a dynamic wobble motion as your subjects move around. Use your tracking shots to follow your subjects. Like its name suggests, tracking shots literally track the subject of the shot. The camera follows this helicopter as it takes off into the sky. This can be from the front when they're facing us or driving past us, or we can track this woman from behind as she walks away. Try combining different camera motions. In this case, the camera zooms and tilts up at the same time. Something you need to know about AI video is that the results won't be the same every time we try the same prompt. Here's an example of where I use the same exact words that shows the tank driving forwards. In one of them the tank is static and in the other one the tank slowly moves forwards. So don't give up if you don't get exactly the video you want the first try. Sometimes it takes a few attempts. AI does still struggle with hands, a lot of these motions have small deformations if you closely look at the fingers, even if the overall body motion makes sense. In this scene, her hands twisted in a weird way that doesn't quite look right. The smaller the hands in the video frame, the more likely they'll deform, so I'd avoid fast hand movements as much as possible. When you finish directing your AI video clips inside Runway, you can upscale them to 4K to get the highest quality results for your projects. By the way, I mostly focused on cinematic, realistic types of videos in this tutorial. But don't be afraid to try out different styles. That's one of the really powerful things about this Runway Gen 4 update. It works across all different sorts of video styles from 2D anime style videos to even 3D Pixar style videos. So we've covered everything about directing camera movements, but what about adding voices to our characters and making them talk just like real actors? With lip sync, facial expressions, and head movements all included. If you want to learn how to add lip sync to your characters in Runway, 
Go watch this tutorial right here.